really expected something amazing to happen. Like one morning I'd wake up and I'd be a woman and I'd be different and, you know, I'd feel different and I'd look different. And one morning I woke up and I had them and I didn't look different and I didn't feel different. It was all exactly the same. I haven't had them yet, so I don't know much. I was 14 and it was about time. <laughs> I just, it wasn't really anything major. I just thought, well, it's going to happen to me one day. I think it just comes naturally because everyone has to get it sometime. I just felt that inside me would feel more grown up, but it didn't at all. I'm a year too young for my class. And so my friends are a year older than me. And so I was the second last person in the group to get them. I just knew it, it was something part of life and that I was growing up and mum goes, your friends have come and I go, oh yeah, really good, my friends have come. Ever since the day you were born, your body has been changing and growing. But somewhere between the ages of 8 and 17, important and obvious changes begin to happen as you grow into a young woman. Perhaps you've noticed a difference in your moods and the way you think about things. Your body is changing in a very special way. One of the most important changes in a girl's life is the beginning of menstruation. A sure sign that your body is doing exactly what it was designed to do. Lots of girls have their own name for menstruation, but most call it having a period, because that's how it occurs, periodically, about once a month. The word menstruation is taken from the Latin menses, meaning month. And this monthly happening is called the menstrual cycle. No one can say exactly what menstruation will be like for you, but the more you know how your body works, the better you'll feel. I heard it from the playground first at school and then I asked my mum about it and she told me. And we saw a series of films and it was, we learned about menstruation when we were learning about sex and things like that. My mum was in hospital having a baby and I didn't really know who to turn to so I had to go to my nana and I was pretty confused really because mum wasn't there. I suppose from school and from my mother all combined because you just get bits. <laughs> I got him on Christmas Eve and the next day had to go to, a, um, you know, for the big feast that we had and then they were going in the pool and I couldn't go in and, like, your cousins and all just look at you and think, you know, what's wrong with her? Oh, yeah, they're all going on about it and, you know, if, if they had it, they were saying how wonderful they were and boasting and all this and I just... No two girls are ever exactly alike. Each girl develops according to her own body rhythm. A personal timing, which is part of every one of us. When a girl's body is ready, the pituitary gland sends out the growing up signal that sets the reproductive organs to work. At this time, hormones in your body become very active as they begin to prepare your body for womanhood. These hormones will continue to influence your body throughout life, particularly an important female growth hormone called oestrogen. The most obvious changes during adolescence are the gradual growth of breasts, a rounding of the hips, the appearance of hair over the pubic bone and underarms, and the beginning of menstruation. These are the reproductive organs, the main parts of a girl's body concerned with menstruation. Where does oestrogen come from? Oestrogen is produced by your ovaries and they'll go on producing oestrogen for as long as you menstruate or throughout your reproductive life. The ovaries, one on each side, are about the size of olives. The fallopian tubes are thin tubes which tether the ovaries to the uterus, which is also called the womb. This is where, if you were pregnant, a baby would develop during pregnancy. Your uterus is about the same shape and size as an upside down pear. At the lower end of the uterus is a tiny opening called the cervix. And attached to the cervix is the vagina, the passageway leading from the uterus to the outside of your body. Your ovaries contain about 400,000 ova, or eggs, which were already present when you were born. Because, as you know, a woman's body is designed for the possibility of having children one day. It's during the menstrual cycle that your body prepares itself for a possible pregnancy. 
Each month, a tiny ovum or egg, a hundred of them could fit on a pinhead, is expelled by one of your ovaries and scooped up by hair-like tissue at the end of the fallopian tubes. Then the ovum begins its journey through the fallopian tubes to the uterus. This takes from three to six days. While this is happening, your uterus has been building up a lining of healthy new tissue and blood so that by the time the ovum reaches the uterus, this lining is rich and soft. If the ovum has been fertilized, how this happens will be shown later in this film. It will attach itself to the lining and develop into a baby. But most of the time, the ovum remains unfertilized and just passes through the uterus and out of the body. When this happens, your uterus no longer needs its rich lining, so the blood and tissue of the lining is shed out of the uterus down through the vagina and out of the body. This is called the menstrual flow and the loss of the lining can take from two to eight days. Let's watch the cycle again. Every month, a tiny ovum begins its journey through the fallopian tube to the uterus. While this is happening, your uterus builds up a lining of healthy new tissue and blood. How much blood is there? Firstly, Menstruation is not really bleeding in the usual sense. The lining, along with the blood contained in it, is meant to be lost, and your body prepares for its loss about every 28 days. Although the timing varies from girl to girl, you may lose anything from one tablespoon to six tablespoons of menstrual blood each period. But the amount of flow also varies from girl to girl, particularly in the first two or three years, as your body adjusts to its new role. About three quarters of the menstrual flow is usually lost in the first two days. Some girls lose more on the first day, others on the second or third day. Every girl's body has its own rhythm. mother's uterus. Naturally, menstruation stops during pregnancy, but it begins again soon after the baby's born. Although each one of these girls is about 14, each one is different in her own special way. Each has a natural body rhythm all her own. And because every girl is different, so every period is different too. For most girls, menstruation begins at 12 or 13. However, it can start as early as 8 or 9, or later at 15 or, or even 17. Whenever menstruation begins, is right for you. At first, your periods may be quite irregular. They may last well over a week, or be very short. You may even skip a few. But as your body adjusts to its new rhythm, they soon settle into a regular pattern. Every 28 days is the average but your cycle may be 21 days or even six weeks. Why not chart your own body rhythm? You can do this by using an ordinary calendar or by making your own. Every month, mark the days you menstruate. Then, note any mood changes or cramping you may experience. After a few months, you'll be able to see your own body rhythm, so you can always be prepared. If I forget about them, if I'm doing something and I don't think about the pain, it's not really there. Some people say that they have to stay in bed a lot, but I don't want that to happen. But I think that when I do get it, then I'm not going to be staying in bed, I'm just going to carry on like I normally do. Is there anything you can do about cramps? If you experience cramps, and most women do at some stage, there are special exercises, like these, which are great for relieving cramps and useful for firming up stomach muscles every day. A warm bath or a hot water bottle placed over your stomach can really help too. Just use your body rhythm calendar to plot the times when you're most likely to experience cramping so you can be ready for it and do something about it. You'll find all these exercises in the booklet Perhaps You've Noticed You're Changing. Is exercise good for you when you're menstruating? Having a period shouldn't stop you from doing anything you want to do. It really depends on how you feel. Just don't overdo it. Keeping fit with regular exercise is important all the time because it gives you more energy and helps you sleep better. 
These days we take commercially produced sanitary pads and tampons for granted. But only 50 years ago, women made their own protection and used pieces of cloth to absorb their menstrual flow. These pieces of cloth were washed and reused. Imagine wearing wadded linen pinned inside a corset. And compare that with the freedom of disposable pads, which absorb menstrual flow outside the body and are worn next to your panties. And tampons, which absorb the menstrual flow inside the vagina. These are called feminine hygiene products. And continuing research and development will make them even more comfortable, invisible and efficient in the future. How many types of pads are there? Basically, there are two types of pad. Tabbed pads and adhesive pads, which come in various sizes. For the tabbed pad, you'll need a special belt, like this one. When the tabbed pad is fastened to the belt, it should look like this. Adhesive pads have an adhesive strip that you press onto the gusset of your panties, like this. Full-size adhesive pads can be thick or thin. And for light flow days, there's even a special mini size too. It's a good idea to experiment, to find the pad that suits you best. Most pads also have a thin, moisture-proof plastic shield to help guard against leakage. When were the first tampons used? The women of ancient Egypt and Abyssinia were known to have used types of tampons 4,000 years ago. In those days, tampons were handmade from rolled papyrus leaves or fleece. And women wore them for the same reason they do today. Freedom. Tampons are small cylinders of absorbent material which have been compressed into the shape of a lipstick. Because tampons absorb menstrual fluid inside the body, they prevent menstrual odour. And as they can't be seen, you can do everything as usual during your periods, like sport and swimming. They're positioned in the central part of the vagina, where there are few nerve endings, so they can't be felt. As the tampon soaks up menstrual fluid, it expands. Can a tampon fall out or get lost? Tampons can't fall out because they're held in place by the muscles at the vaginal opening and they can't get lost inside you because the opening of the cervix is far too small to allow a tampon to pass through it. Can a girl use a tampon with the very first period? There's no reason why not, except personal preference and comfort. Most girls, however, begin by using pads and then, when they feel more comfortable with their periods, move on to tampons. If you haven't used tampons before, it's good to remember that it may take a little practice to insert them correctly at first. A friend of mine and I both wanted to use them and we were sort of having almost a competition about it, of who would use them first sort of thing. Uh, there was a pool party on and I really wanted to go and I guess it just made me more determined and finally I managed to use them and sort of rang her up and it was a big excited conversation because I could at last. How you feel about menstruation and growing up will largely depend on your own experiences and the attitudes of other women you know. It's important to remember that no two women are ever exactly alike. And as with everything else in life, the more questions you ask, 